In my Amazfit GTR3 review, I mentioned how the GPS was a little slow to connect at times. Most of the times, it worked reasonably well and logged onto the satellites almost immediately but sometimes it didn't. So this brings up an important question that needs to be answered. Is there anything you and I can do to make the GPS connectivity on the Amazfit GTR3 better? And do we even need to do anything? What if occasional hiccups are nothing to worry about? I am going to answer all the questions in this Amazfit GTR3 GPS navigation and accuracy test. But before we go into the solution, here is the nagging reminder to use that subscribe and like button if you find this video helpful. Before diving into the accuracy test, let's talk a little about the watch first. The Amazfit GTR3 watch comes with more than 150 built-in sports profiles. And there are many activities that take advantage of built-in GPS available on the watch. The most notable ones that use GPS are outdoor running, trail running, skiing, hiking, walking, skateboarding and roller skating. If you perform any of these sports, then the watch has a profile for you. However, having profiles is not enough. We learned that a hard way during our Cospit Tank M1 review. Do check it out using the I button. So it becomes important that you can track your activities accurately as another fun part of working out or doing outdoor sports is analyzing it afterwards. I love how smartwatch companies have gamified our fitness routines. That's why whatever watch we get needs to track our sports well. And to see whether or not GPS on Amazfit GTR3 performs well, we are going to do a comparison test with Garmin 245M and see how well it fares. I started out with 80% battery on my Amazfit and 55% battery on my Garmin. Garmin got a GPS signal in almost no time and Amazfit here took 8 to 10 seconds longer. After ending my run, Garmin measured my run to be at 6.20 km and Amazfit tracked it to be 6.18 km. The Garmin 245M consumed 10% battery to track my run whereas Amazfit consumed only 4% battery. After completing the workout, both the watches synced my running data to their respective companion apps. I analyzed my run paths on the map in both the devices and found both the watches delivering a similar performance. There were some problems like GPS overshooting or undershooting on some parts of my tracks. However, these are the common occurrence on smartwatches and are nothing to worry about unless your watch is drastically not performing well. In my usage, GPS performed really well and there weren't any GPS related issues like signals getting lost, recording the wrong path, huge battery drain or any other tracking issue. If outdoor sports tracking is your priority, then at $170 price tag, this delivers more than a decent performance. Speaking of performance, if for some reason you aren't getting good performance out of your Amazfit GTR3, then I would recommend tinkering with the watch GPS settings. Simply go to the watch settings from the control center or menu, look for the workout option then open it. Here you will see two options, GPS settings and AGPS expired notification. Before opening GPS settings, make sure you ensure that AGPS expired notification is turned on. Enabling it will ensure that the watch checks every day that it has the GPS satellite coordinates to quickly lock onto its position. Not having the information beforehand can increase the GPS lock-in time. The next setting that we will be looking at is the GPS settings option. Here you will find the following GPS profiles, accuracy balanced, power saving and custom. Starting off with the accuracy profile first, Amazfit GTR3 supports GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, QZSS and BDS satellites for navigation. An accuracy profile uses all of these satellite features at once. This will increase your workout accuracy at a heavy toll on the battery life. The second one is the balance profile. If you select this one, then the watch will use GPS and GLONASS to track your position. This is considered to be the best combination as it won't drain your watch's battery and also deliver decent performance. Next is the power saving profile, which will only use GPS satellites in a lower power state. The last profile is the custom profile. Here you can choose between the following satellite options. GPS, BDS plus GPS, GLONASS plus GPS, Galileo plus GPS, low power GPS or all satellite at once option. Now one thing you will note here is that there isn't any option to choose the Japanese QZSS satellite. It is because the QZSS will always remain active in all satellite combinations. 
you cannot disable or change this behavior on the watch. And in my personal opinion, it might be the factor contributing to the 5 to 10 seconds extra time the watch takes for locking onto the GPS. It's not a deal breaker for me and the GPS accuracy of the Amazfit GTR3 is more than decent in my opinion. At this price tag, there aren't many watches that deliver this level of consistent and reliable performance. I would recommend checking out our in-depth GTR3 review to know about the accuracy of the other features of the watch. With that, it's time for me to say goodbye but before going, I would like to ask you to share your experience with the Amazfit GTR3 GPS tracking. I read all of your comments and also reply to them, so I will be waiting to hear your opinion. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel Wearholic for more videos on wearable tech.